Now, let us come for plane, plane is little complicated and becomes interesting when we uh, looks very arbitrary, the definition for plane looks very arbitrary uh, when we look at it from the plane point of view, uh, but when we go into the reciprocal space and define the reciprocal lattice and reciprocal vector, which we will do in the next class. So, there it becomes more meaningful that why we were defining this way. So, here our first specification is again to choose origin, but in contrast to what we did for direction direction we were insisting that choose on the direction. Here we will say choose origin not on plane, if you have chosen your origin on the plane, if I choose for this plane B or D as my origin, I am done, I will not get the Miller indices of this plane, I just cannot get why I cannot get? Because the second step is find the intercepts, find the intercepts on the three axis. Obviously, if you choose the origin on the plane, what is the intercept? All three intercepts are 0. Now, if I choose some other plane passing through the same origin, different plane, what will be the intercept of that different plane? Again 0, 0, 0. So, 0, 0, 0 will not be a meaningful intercept and will not give me any meaningful information about what plane I am talking about. Every plane passing through the origin will give me 0, 0, 0 whatever its orientation. So, because we, we are interested in intercepts in defining the Miller indices, we are interested in intercepts that is why step 1 is justified that you do not choose your or you never choose your origin on the plane. Then divide the intercept again we do that fractional thing divide the intercept by corresponding lattice parameter. By corresponding lattice parameters. So, for this plane let us choose the origin A so, then we are finding that the x axis intercept and x, y and z I have selected in this orientation. So, from origin A, x is here, y is here and z is there and I am finding that and the unit cell edge length was A. So, the x intercept is A, y intercept is again a full B, full a, a unit cell edge length and unit cell edge length is B and the unit cell edge length is C, where it is intercepting the z axis. So, intercepts were A, B and C, but the third steps ask me to divide them by the corresponding lattice parameter. So, it is the ratio. So, this is the relative intercept. So, becomes 1, 1, 1. The fourth and the craziest step is take the take the reciprocals. Bhaiya intercept mil gaya, uske baad bhi usko kuch aur kar rahe hain, to thodi javardasti ho gai. So, take the reciprocal. So, here of course, it is trivial even if we had forgotten to take the reciprocal we would have got the correct answer, 
but not always we will not always be so lucky here since all were 1 and reciprocal of 1 is also 1. So, here we get this step is trivial and the fifth step an important step is to put them into round bracket and crystallographers are very finicky about the choice of bracket. So, for direction I used a square bracket So, if you use wrong bracket you will miscommunicate in the crystallographic world and in the exam situation you will lose marks. So, you should not for your own happiness you should be careful about the choice of bracket direction is square bracket plane round bracket. It was not always so gradually this convention developed in very early literature you will find maybe for direction and plane both round bracket or square bracket, but gradually this system has developed and now we have to follow that. Yes, yes, yes we will come to that also the exact minister position position of like we had half, half zero. yeah so that is that yes. so a particular location center of the cube very good question so so this is direction this is plane location leave it without bracket so again not very uniformly followed but quite often careful crystallographers follow that. So, they will simply write half half half. So, first of all it is fractional. So, that itself indicates that we are talking of location otherwise if it was a plane or direction I would have multiplied by 2. Oh, I am missing that step. After taking the reciprocal again we have the we I jump to putting the bracket if there is some common factor or if some fraction is there. So, reduce to reduce to smallest integers that is step is here also. Smallest integer and then maybe in the sixth step you put the correct bracket right. So, it is clear. So, this plane is this nice plane is 1 1 1 again think of this this was a nice sodium chloride unit cell A equal B equal C alpha beta gamma 90 degree. So, it was a nice Cartesian system it was giving. So, 1 1 1 plane was actually intersecting at a distance 1 1 1 start imagining distorting this unit cell in your mind's eye make A keep it orthogonal but make a b and c different what will this plane be then still 1 1 1 because cutting a x axis on a a by a is 1 cutting b axis on b b by b is 1 cutting the z axis on c c by c is 1. Now, start tilting the angles also axes are no more orthogonal what will this plane be 1 1 1. So, a plane which cuts the terminal point of A, terminal point of B and terminal point of C will always be 1 1 1 irrespective of the unit cell size or shape. what will be the Miller indices of this pink plane C E G hmm? yeah. Minus one, minus one, minus one. yeah because now I will choose the origin here I will choose the origin here I could have chosen or this origin also 
because that is also not lying on the plane. Only thing is that I cannot choose origin not allowed origins are C, E and G because they are lying on the plane. So, I cannot choose those as origins. A I had chosen for the yellow plane, I can continue using it for this pink plane. Only issue is that I am not able to visualize this plane when extended because the plane is plane, plane is not triangle. Triangle is intersection of the plane with the unit cell. So, plane is infinite. So, that infinite plane with the infinite x axis will show some intersection, but where? Either I have to be a god or I have to have in very good geometric visualization or I am a computational wizard that I can quickly calculate where this plane is going to hit the x axis. If I am not all that and I am just a simple chota scientist trying to figure out the Miller indices, it is better to choose shift my origin to a more convenient location and I find that for this pink one if I choose h, then I am able to see the intercepts on all the three axes. And it so happens, but as I shift I am not allowed to invert my axes. So, axes are still in the x y z direction. So, the intercepts are now opposite, intercepts are now opposite. So, x has a negative intercept 1 bar, y has a negative intercept 1 bar, z has a negative intercept 1 bar. So, bar 1, bar 1, bar 1 and these planes you see are parallel. Okay. So, it is actually a general result that any indices h k l if you have a plane and if you make all of them negative h bar k bar l bar, they will always be a parallel planes. With respect to the yellow plane, where was the origin above the plane or below the plane? Below the plane. With respect to pink plane, where was the origin above the plane or below the plane? Above the plane. Okay. That is what is actually the difference between positive and negative indices. We are insisting that origin cannot be on the plane. A plane divides a space into two half. If I have a plane like this, it is dividing the space into left and right, my left and my right. I am not allowed to take the origin on the plane. So, I will either take the origin on the left or I will take the origin on the right. Both sides are fine. If I get a Miller indices for the same plane, if I get here, here there are two different planes, but even for the same plane, we will see example for the same plane. If I am choosing the origin on the left and I get h k l, if I go to the other side, I will get the origin or I will get the Miller indices h bar k bar l bar. So, 1 1 1 and bar 1 1 1 can actually be considered same because parallel planes cons are considered to be the same plane. Why? To have the same Miller indices that was this reduced to smallest integer. This plane was intersecting at 1 1 1. I take the other parallel plane which intersects at 2 2 2. Okay. It is going at 2 2 2, but then I will get here 2 2 2, but the five, step 5 is reduced to a smallest integer will make it 1 1 1. So, all parallel planes have the same Miller indices.
No, they are parallel planes. Plane normal is your choice. Whether they are having plane normal in the same direction or opposite direction is your choice. Okay. If you if you are thinking of some volume within these two planes and thinking of outward normal, then maybe opposite direction. But as an individual plane, for the plane I can take the normal this way or this way. So, that is your choice. So, th so by that argument the yellow and pink plane should have had the same Miller indices. So, I could have called both of them 1 1 1 and what I was telling you that if you can work out uh, where it will intersect actually this is the plane which is 2 2 2. If I join this, this and this, you can see that this is a smaller triangle, chota triangle in this bigger triangle. Because of the chota triangle, I was not able to imagine where they are intersecting on the axis, but if I extend it and see where it is intersecting, it is exactly 2 2 2. So, by that philosophy it should have had the Miller indices 1 1 1. Why it had bar 1 bar 1 bar 1? Because I shifted the origin to the other side. Instead of choosing the origin on the same side, I shifted the origin to the other side. So, I got it negative. Good. So, now find it for P Q R S. What is the choice of origin? d because from d only I will be able to see the intercept. Of course, it could have been e also d and e are equivalent from e also I can see the intercept. On the x axis what is the intercept? Half on the y axis what is the intercept minus half and on the z axis what is the intercept infinity because it is parallel. So, when it is parallel we take the intercept infinity. So, intercepts are half minus half infinity multiply by 2 1 bar 1 0 put it in round bracket 1 1 bar 0.